Hello everyone, and welcome to this assembly and painting video for Kingdom Death Monsters The Phoenix from the Kingdom Death Monster core game. Few notes before I get straight into the normal commentary. The hands are numbered. The various hands that you glue onto the body, uh, as in my video has them numbered if you wish to know where they go in. Uh, and I am referring to the hands you can currently see on the sprue in the lower left. This video will also be timestamped for specifically the hands, the base coat, the ink wash, and the highlight if you wish to jump to any of those, as those will be on the screen. And lastly, this video has some points that are extremely sped up, because this was around three hours of film uh, after already speeding it up to a decent amount. So there are some times where this video will get very jumpy and jittery because of that, as to save you some time. So, on to the normal commentary. As you can see, I am assembling the phoenix here, starting with the body. I uh, The holes you can see in the sides of the centerpiece were me attempting to make holes for magnets, and finding that I either couldn't make a hole big enough so that I could support a larger magnet without tearing the structure of the model, or making a hole enough holes small enough without issue um, for, as you can see, what is on the cameras uh, on the video's right uh, for smaller magnets. And I was thinking pins in place of that at one point, but mm, that was just not a good idea if they broke off. Um, so I started with the body, moved on, or actually I started with the log, then moved on to the body, started assembling the actual self of the body itself, and as you can see I've glued the hands on and I'm now doing the face one by one. This is also the recommended order that I would say for assembling the face itself. Um, it just makes it a lot easier to start from the bottom and then glue your way up, including making sure to stop for the mustache. Yes, that is mustache, not drool as I glue it to my own fingers. Uh, a lot of people have thought it's drool, but it is definitely a mustache. Um, it does kind of glue in on, but it definitely goes in once there. It will be the thing that will get most in the way if you are a person that wants to paint while um, things are glued together, like myself. It really does get in the way, and it's very... Um, yeah, it, it, it kind of springs around. Um, so... The thumbs are separate pieces, and I do finish the entire model other than the small hands before moving on, except gluing on the wings itself, um, which the hands I get to here in a second. Um, don't, uh, of course, assembling the base as per usual. The model's assembly minus the hands was actually extremely simple for a model this size, but here we are on to the madness that is the hands. A lot of these I didn't have too much trouble with. It just turned into a lot of figuring out where they were was the bigger issue. Some of them I did have some issue actually getting them to stay in right. I've more so edited out the parts where you where I needed to actually pull them out, put them back in over and over again. Um, I apologize if a lot of this is out of frame. This was uh, still when I was trying to figure out how to keep things in frame while painting and assembling. This is also the first model that I needed to use a larger rig for in order to get into the camera. If you compare this to my previous videos, you'll notice that the squares in the background are smaller because they're further away from the camera. Um, but yes, for the most part, this took a long time, specifically the hands. Uh, I, I've jokingly said to a friend of mine who's thought about getting this game that I'd assemble it all for him, at least the monsters, the core, and the starting survivors, except for the hands. The hands, he, he'd have to pay me for. And he's just like, that. that's completely reasonable. Um, I recommend when assembling these to make sure that they don't fly off and do them one at a time. Keep them on the sprue until you're doing the one until it's the one you need and don't cut off any of the extras till the next one you're gonna lose track of which one's which um I, I didn't even need to try it to know that would happen i just looked at it and went oh god um also if you're wondering if it's the left wing or the right wing that i'm holding whichever one is on the table is at its appropriate space so right now you see the left one on the table thus i'm holding the right one 
For the most part, this was just extremely tedious because these are the size of hands on... These hands are the same size as they would be on a normal survivor model, and it was just maddening. And here's the butt hands. I still can't believe they made that a separate piece, just like they make a lot of breasts on female models, especially the pinups, separate pieces. Not individual pieces for each breast, but the... They are one piece, um, instead of just, so the, the body looks ridiculously just like, here's a cavity where the chest would go, and it's just like, really? Uh, whatever. I love this game, but sometimes the art does grind on me a little bit. I don't mind it, but I know a lot of other people will, and it's more my worry of people being scared away from this game. Because I know of people that have gone, I don't want to play this, this is sexist, or overly sexualized. And I'm like, mm, no, really, get into the setting. Um, these characters probably would be in decent shape because they're hunter, gatherer, minus the nomad kind of people. And, oh, they're wearing less clothes because they don't care. They just don't have the time to care. Warmth doesn't actually seem to be an issue now that I think about it in the Kingdom of Death setting. So, yeah, whatever. Also, the men are usually just as much. So here I am gluing on the wings itself. Uh, so there goes away those holes that I had to deal with. Um, now... As this finishes the assembly, minus the base itself, I just wanted to make a note about puttying. I did not putty this model enough. I wish I did a lot more. I did the mistake of sitting down and working on gap filling all eight of the Kingdom Death monsters in one sitting and got impatient by the time that I got around to the Phoenix because it's a huge model, as you can see. So this is where the camera gets really jerky because of the fact that it's at 10 times the speed. Uh, yeah, this video is already 25 minutes long about. And I, I'm guessing you didn't want to sit here for an hour and a half because of this, or more likely an hour. Um, also, I don't want to commentate for that long. <laughs> uh, uh, as I was saying, um, you're going to see multiple spots, like you can see right there uh, on the side, that I did not putty well enough. Uh, the top of the head is the one that bothers me the most. I'm not actually pleased too much with how this model came out. Like, I'm happy with it in the sense that it's done. I don't hate it, but it doesn't look on par with what I prefer my models to look like, and it definitely doesn't match the quality of a lot of the other monsters. Especially because there's a lot of moments like right there where I had to repaint over darker colors with lighter colors because I misplaced them in the first place and a second coat didn't help too much. Um, but yeah, so the paint theme that I went for in general was a phoenix. I was going for something uh, cross between you know, a fiery bird and a bird of paradise. Uh, I couldn't find a lot of birds of paradise and looking for stuff, and so I focused more on the fiery color motif. Um, I actually ended up, because the bird is just completely featherless, or the monster here is completely featherless uh, in around its face and stuff like that, I ended up having to look up a lot of art about, or not art, pictures of featherless birds um that one bird that the their um that their owner has the tendency to make knitted outfits for which is just so adorable um ended up being a lot of help in terms of how it was but then also looking at birds in general it's like okay they don't actually have a lot of feathers on their face which is why i repainted the uh flesh color over the where the wing uh, feathers were right there but for the body itself i then continued with a lot of it uh, figuring out the colors of the pustules that I get to later, that was more using the cards. Um, I did debate between another color scheme of a blue turquoise green kind of color scheme based on the Phoenix Feather story uh, event image, but I decided to go with things that matched more the um, monster resources. So the arms, I am painting a flesh color because I want them to be just as standout-ish as the hands. Um, I don't remember if I painted them the same exact color or an off color to more match the old man motif that is, well, the human part of the phoenix, if you want to call that human at all. Um, the feet do get painted black, like, honestly, kind of like a rooster, um, but that was not 
the kind of motif I was going for. A lot of birds actually have black legs, and it was a little odd, but hey, it worked. Um, <laughs> sorry about all the jumping around and everything that it does. That's what happens at 10 times speed. Um, some of it I couldn't even edit out without just literally cutting out a fraction of a second. So here I am moving on to the fingers. It's interesting note, those fingers have fingerprints in them. That's how high detailed this company does its models. I didn't know till I started, uh, till right around here where I started painting them. I didn't even notice while assembling them. And it's just astounded me. So the nails I end up doing a later color, or later a different color, but you'll see that when I get around to it. But this is, again, the same flesh that I'm using for, uh, flesh tone that I'm using for the arms. It ends up being used for the hands. Uh, which, again, is also at a 10 speed because, oh boy, do I, those take a while. This model actually, um, for those of you that don't know, I, once I'm done with a base coat, I, or a slot base coat as I refer to it, although a slot base coat on this was pretty close to an actual base coat minus the hands, the face. Um, I take a lot of time in between filming of just going, hey, here's this thing, and I need to do the base coat, or I need to fix up the base coat because I was sloppy and I need to fix up the things that it's not worth filming on um, at all. This one took days, if not weeks. The overall model took me about a month of work off and on. So there was me painting the base, the usual gray I do. Again, unless the base comes with something uh, like some of the pinup models do or some of the... Um, narrated models will in the upcoming in the gambler's chest and the upcoming expansions um i want it to look like a game piece oh and the gold smoke knight for example uh that one i painted to look like the surface it's on which was a bunch of skulls that had red smoke coming out of them um so here i go actually painting the nails i went with a bone like color um so it doesn't really show up different right now, but once the ink wash and highlights go in, oh, it, it stands out and it is just beautiful. Um, this model, honestly speaking of things standing out and after effects, does not look good under this amount of light. Um, I cannot alter the light that I use for this. It is literally a uh, smartphone camera that I use for this on top of some wire racks. But <laughs> regardless, it, it's just, yeah. And the camera is going to be really shitty here. I apologize about that. This was me paint, starting to paint the mustache. But here we go on to the hands. I did slow the camera down a little bit because otherwise it would just be blink, 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 blink. Uh, so this model has something around like 50, 60 hands on it in total. The 30 you glue on are not all of them. They're, the model is literally just covered in tiny hands. It's interesting that they're all in specific sort of places, like around its legs and its um, basically what would be considered kind of its elbows um, with the autonomy of a wing and all, the section I'm painting right now. Uh, but the edge of the wing primarily. There's also some towards the body. I found it really interesting, the different layout. But um, honestly, there's not much rhyme and reason to them. Then again, there's not much rhyme and reason to this model in generally. It's a bird with a human face and a crap ton of hands to the point in which its wings are hands and there are AI cards that are left wing punch and right wing punch. It's ridiculous. It is awesome. I still say this is a model. The more you look at it, the worse it gets of just like... Oh god, what horrific thing am I looking at? It's still nowhere near the Sunstalker, the Gorm, or the um, Wet Nurse, or the Forge God. The latter of two are not in the game yet, and honestly, those are a level of grotesque that I hope that they're not. But if they are, they better be in the same expansion, because they fall in the same area. And that's going to be a massive expansion. It would be the Holy Lands, which is one of the few centralized or a few um non-influx locations it, it's really interesting i don't even know a lot of details about it but in gen con 2017 poots managed uh, mentioned that there were a few places that are always in existence kind of always there and um don't really move too much it also hinting towards the fact the landscape does change constantly um on, i'm gonna try I want to talk about this kind of stuff more, but I, I need to finish reading through the current expansions before I really dig into that. 
Um, and I'm still working on videos for the base game. Um, playing the expansions now, but that's a different story. So, again, I'm kind of rambling on because I'm still just painting hands. This took forever. Um, it, it, it wasn't difficult. It was just annoying. Some of them were hard to find and stuff like that. They just blended right in, like, uh, the, the initial paint um scheme or the initial painting that i'm doing right now i didn't even get all of them i know i i in fact missed at least three entirely and managed to catch them later i i took a good half an hour at one point just looking over the model making sure i didn't miss hands uh it is a genuine pain in the ass and probably why i could see people charging a, a lot for this model getting painted even if it's a low quality paint job just hey it's just a base coat um speaking of which with the base coat i really did not li like like I, I have the tendency to refer to a lot of models lately with the way i've been painting uh as looking like they're play-doh or putty um when they're just the base coat this thing looked like garbage before the ink coat like the ink coat alone takes the quality of this model and just puts it up so many levels you, you'll see i'll talk about it more when we get there um but regardless uh so here's the backside hands mainly around the legs and such the butt hands i'll get to in a few seconds i guess or whenever i get around to that. i don't remember if i finished the yeah i move on to the other side before um getting to the awkward butt hands or guaca hands whatever they'd actually be called yes that's an actual word for those that don't know Save yourself the trouble. Don't bother looking it up. Um, and again, oh, that seam just stands out so badly when you actually look right at it. I, I, I hate myself for that. I'm currently actually uh, puttying the expansion monsters just now getting around to that. I started with the Lonely Tree um, a couple days ago. And, oh, my God, so many seams. And I want to make sure I want to get them done right. So I'm taking my time more on that. But that's also a lot more models anyway. Um I'm, I'm going to do those in the order that they come up in, just like how I've done the painting videos for um, a lot of these monsters. So here I am on the mustache. I ended up cutting out a lot of this because there are a lot of sections where the model itself just got in the way of the camera. Like, it, that's an example, but that like there were things worse than that. So you'll see a lot of moments of just subtly more paint on the mustache. Um, it doesn't really show up too well in the highlight recording, like the actual recording of the highlight coat, uh, but I do end up dry brushing some gray into there to show aging and, uh, uh, of the human-ish part. And then here are the pustules. Um, I just went with a straight orange base coat, the same orange that gets used on the middle range of feathers. Um, I just completely forgot to work on them at that time and also didn't have the pink for the body done yeah that's actually a light gray to pink um not my darker pink which is more of a lightened up red which yeah i know pink technically is but yeah um so the mouth also because the model got in the way primarily the base itself i cut out a lot of it so there's the base coat itself so now we move on to the uh, ink wash um this Again, makes the model look tremendously better, but unfortunately also gets into the one gray. Like, I really screwed up the ink wash, or more so, I screwed up the highlight coat. Oh, or in turn, screwed up the ink wash enough that it made the highlight coat not helpful as much. Um, I probably went a little bit too heavy on it, and the, the model looks dirty at the end. Um, I'm okay with that, because Kingdom Death Monster, I imagine, would be a place filled with dirt and filth. Like, I imagine these people and monsters never get clean and there's little reference to bathable water at all um then again i wonder if things even need hydration water isn't really referred to all that much uh like is it needed for nourishment or is it just hey we can drink this is nice this feels good this is refreshing but eh, regardless so Again, as stated with the base coat, the ink wash is sped up tremendously, at least for the feathers and such, uh, because otherwise you'd be here for way too long. Um, 
This doesn't take nearly as long as the base coat. This is actually sort of section of working on the model. It is for almost any model. Um, I think the only one where I took a lot of time is the most recent model that I finished uh, in my, in, you know, in my actual what I've painted, um, which is something from War Machine. Um, and I want to, and part of it is surrounded in flames that I didn't want to eat, ink wash the flames. So I had to be really careful to do things right. Um, but I did ink wash everything else, including the sections that would have glowed because uh, honestly, the flames are more magical than actual flames. So I would assume the light wouldn't be a little odd regardless. Um, so now if I had taken the time to stop and put the camera right on it, you'd really be able to see the uh, fingerprints afterwards. And as I was saying, the fingers look tremendously better once the ink wash is put into place. So I did most of the model by this point, uh, and now it's the base. This base was really a pain. Part of it is not made correctly. I should have said this back at assembly, but that was already done by the time I was done with the, you know, here's a couple heads up that I did at the beginning. And there's the usual base part again. I try to cut those out. So there's the ink wash, or the model with the ink wash, and then we move on to the highlight. Um, this red I need to really replace because of highlighting with it. Painting with it is fine, but highlighting with it is just a giant mess. It results in, like, as you can see, barely any difference on the next color or red. And anything lighter, like, I'm, I'm going to have issues finding, uh, like, uh, it, with it remaining red. It will be more pink than red. Um, but... It, it was kind of awkward and stuff. I think I ended up doing two coats of different colors over the model. Um, I may have done some orange over it later um, because I still wanted that main area to look red, not orange. Um, I know I end up highlighting the uh, rest of the feathers, like what I'm doing right now, uh, with a yellow, the same yellow that's behind it. Although I think, as you can see, I may have started with some orange. And then I highlight the yellow with white. Uh, which is also what I end up using for all of the basic flesh. I believe I actually highlight the nails with the same tone that I use the flesh. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the white is what really makes the model a bit standoffish, as you can now see it being applied. Specifically the white on the yellow. It, it makes it look like it's just dirty and that it was never meant to be yellow in the first place. It makes it look like it's just a dirty like white feather instead of a... Um, bright yellow feather. I So I probably just applied it way too heavily, but say la vie. Um, I do end up using white on both the bird flesh and on the human flesh or humanoid flesh. Um, also, if you ever get a good look at the head, like at during any of these frames or right there, um, you can see the biggest issue with why I should have puttied more and this one I, and then I actually debated whether or not doing I thought uh the paint would fill in enough because I thought the gap was small enough is the cracks from the different pieces in the head I recommend beyond anything else if you're going to putty anything on this model make sure to putty that because otherwise it will stand out um I personally know that if I ever did this model for commission work I would make sure that was done right a hundred times over or 100% better, which technically is only double, um, regardless. So, uh, highlights end up continuing. Uh, this is pretty much the rest of the model. I don't actually end up inking, didn't end up inking the uh, legs. Um, I don't even remember if I highlighted them. I think I wanted them to look like a deep, dark black, not even highlighting them with a dark gray, the same gray that I used to paint the base. But regardless, here I am on the log uh, I've painted a lot of wood on things uh, so it I have the I just highlight it with the tan makes it look great um, so that that came out fine but that's not the centerpiece of the model it's just a thing to make it stand on speaking of which that log like I know I said earlier it's awkward to put together it just looks out of place it really does I know it's supposed to be standing on a nightmare tree basically but I think I would have liked more of a tree base than just here's a log that looks like it fell somewhere but yeah so on to highlighting the fingernails which uh i now remember i painted the nails on the larger hands same color as the nails on the wings and that's majority of what's left for this uh i 
think that actually ends up being it as the video is coming to a close. So, oh, the tongue, the face, the mouth, stuff like that. But here is the actual completed model. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and that this was helpful. If you did or if it was helpful, feel free to press the like button. If you want to share this video, please do. Uh, if you didn't like this video, go ahead and press it the dislike button, but please leave a constructive comment as to why you didn't like it. Also, feel free to comment in general if you want to, you know, ask on certain things that I did or comment on styles or even improvements that I could do to my painting. And that would be the moment you do that or where you would do that. And if you want to see more like this, be it more painting videos, uh, which should be coming quicker now that I'm not, you know, editing a video that started out at three hours film. Um, or if you want to see more board game overview videos, which again, hopefully I'll be getting back to more with Kingdom Death, or um, my unboxing videos, which is primarily what I do on here, um, feel free to subscribe. Regardless, thank you for watching, and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.